uh, get to know people on a very personal way, one latte at a time, uh, sometimes one pint at a time, uh, usually a little bit of both. And these people become friends. Uh, they become kind of centers of our life. And I wanted to start a, a business that was about something bigger than the business. It was focused on community. And they actually did a really good job with what they did. So those are our three values there. We, we say everything needs to be about craft, serving the best beer, the best coffee. Um, has to be where, about where are you located? <laughs> I've got to come and visit. <laughs> you definitely should. Okay. Uh, in the heart of Depot Town, right across the street from the, the, the food co-op there, if you're familiar well, with that's that. That's Ypsilanti, yeah. Michigan, yeah. Yeah, right next to Ann Arbor. Yeah. Yes. So uh, southeast Michigan is the coffee epicenter, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, th that was the first thing, the, the, the craft. Great beer, great coffee, everything we do, we want it to be uh, the highest quality. But even more important, everything we do, we want to connect people together to build community. So every day we've got events on the calendar, bringing people together, helping people take what they're passionate about and share it with one another um, and share life, just to build kind of that organic connection with, with the people around us. And then the third thing is cause, to make everything that we do about something um, and we're trying to, to end hunger, or at least join in the efforts to end hunger. I find that hunger is a great lens through which the, we can evaluate a lot of the things in the world because it's, it's one of the first human rights to go when something uh, is amiss. You know? mm -hmm. And it's something that almost everyone can, can rally around. There's very mm -hmm. few people who find it controversial to feed the hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I wanted something that could be a good lens to approach the, the broader community that we're working with. Yeah. Now, how, does, how, does, how has this gotten integrated with you standing on a milk carton <laughs> and, and preaching the gospel? Like, is, is there some opportunities to evangelize while you're doing this, or is that not the focus right now? Or? Well, let me put it this way. When I was standing on milk cartons uh, on the Diag in the Diag um, is the central crossroads of the University right, of Michigan. Right, at the University of Michigan. And I never once had a single person that I walked away with a deeper conversation. Mm -hmm. So actually one of the things that frustrated me most about it, I thought this message of the gospel uh, is so important to me and I think it's important to everyone. And yet I, I seem to be making no headway. When I started working in coffee, people would invite me over and say, hey, I know that you're into this Jesus thing. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So I, I was having Bible studies with all sorts of people who had never read the Bible or maybe had walked away. Mm. And that's actually continued. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever start a relationship um, as kind of like on false pretenses. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I'm going to be nice to no. you so I can uh, tell you about my faith. But I do, I do believe that... If you truly love God with all your heart and all your soul, all your mind and all your strength, and you truly love your neighbor, that pretty soon your neighbor is going to learn about the things that you believe. Uh, most of my customers know I'm a Catholic mm -hmm. because we get to talk about it. What did yeah. you do this weekend? Yeah. Well, I went to Mass or I taught this class at my parish. Yeah. Uh, it, they know that my faith is important to me. Mm -hmm. And they come and they ask me for prayer. I get yeah. prayer requests almost every day. Yeah. Uh, and so in a certain sense, and this was actually the biggest difficulty I had going from pastor to laity. Because mm -hmm. I felt like, ah, God's called me to be kind of a pastor to people. How am I supposed to do that? And that was the hardest thing for me to actually give up joining the Catholic Church. But I found that in, a, in many ways I've become a pastor to just the everyday people who come in, yeah, yeah, who get, get to uh, share life with me over a yeah, cup of coffee. That's wonderful. Whatever. That's really wonderful. Yeah. Are your partners, do they share this common vision with you? Or? Uh, yeah, I would say they do. Both of them are uh, Christian people. They're not yeah, Catholics. Yeah. But uh, they, are, they are people who are strongly motivated by their faith to do the work that we do. That's great.
Now, since you become a Catholic, you become a Catholic at an interesting time in the history of the Catholic Church, because there are people who are joining the Catholic Church, but there's a lot of people who are drifting away and who say, you know, I'm not getting anything out of it. And, you know, I don't hear the gospel preached. Or I never knew you could have a personal relationship with Jesus or, or just the world is engulfing them. They're just watching too much television and they're, you know, adopting the values of the world. And so we have this tremendous decline, really, in, in, in Catholic faith, you know, over the last 40 or 50 years. And we've had a lot of confusion, a lot of, a lot of even struggle internally in the church right now. You have cardinals kind of fighting with each other and, you know, stuff I've never seen in my life, you know. How do, how do you handle kind of that the Catholic Church isn't perfect <laughs> in, in terms of actually it's, it's life on the ground? Well, it's not all that different than the, the Protestant Church in that regard. Uh, the, the, whole, the whole church is and always has been uh, a body of people in great need of God's grace. And that's sort of the approach that I take, is one of humility, one of always saying, uh, Lord, you're going to be faithful even if we're faithless. Uh, <laughs> We, have, we haven't been able to destroy the church yet. Yeah. One, one of the signs, I think, of the Catholic Church being founded by Christ is that it's still here. <laughs> no, really. I, I really, it's, it's pretty amazing that it's weathered all the incredible storms over 2,000 years, and it's still here. And it's still, you know, it's still here. I have great hope that uh, the Lord will be faithful today tomorrow and into the future. So I honestly don't give a lot of thought to fear mongering yeah. or to just anxiety about it. Sure. Um, but anxiety never helps. <laughs> fear never helps. Yeah. yeah. The Lord didn't say worry about tomorrow right, uh, because, right. you know, the, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. Uh, uh, he said, you know, don't worry yeah. first and foremost. And also, um, the God will be faithful. We, we see that over and over in Scripture. The God will be faithful, even more faithless. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, you were raised by Christian parents. Mm -hmm. You were raised in the faith. You, you, never, you, know, you had your struggles and questions, but you never really strayed very far. What advice would you have for parents about raising their children in the faith? Because uh, I know you work with a lot of young people, and sometimes they've had struggles, and they haven't been raised in the faith. And I mean, the most important thing, is to be a person of faith yourself, um, to really demonstrate and have that relationship where you love God and you love your kids, and to keep that dialogue open. I think that if, if those two things are the cornerstones, you will find that no matter what happens in the future with your kids, whether they stay in the faith or not, that that, that foundation will still uh, be there for God to work on, with them on. I know for me, uh, I look to my father uh, as the example of what a man can be and should be. I always look to him and honestly, he's the example I look to because he demonstrated love for me, love for the family, love for God, and love for others. And that's the thing that stuck with me, just to live love and service and every opportunity that above all else is i think my inspiration okay well great well thanks billy uh, i'm going to tell folks right now how they can get this little book list called light in the darkness and it's been written by peter herbeck whom you know our vice president of missions and uh it, there's so much darkness in the world today but there's so much light jesus is the light of the world and it's just really, really important that we know that. And so we're not gripped by fear. We're not gripped by anxiety. We're not gripped by all the things that, that grip people who don't know that Jesus is Lord and that the victory really belongs to him. It's also really useful, not only for ourselves, but as a way of reaching out to others and giving somebody something really short to read that can really awaken them to a new hope in their life or a new, new love in their life. And when we come back, I'm going to ask Billy maybe to do a little lay preaching for us in our last couple of minutes. Friends, we're living through difficult and challenging times. The church is in a fierce battle. In the words of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, man is pushing God from the human horizon. And as a result, the light which comes from God is disappearing and humanity is losing its bearings. 
In this moment, it's crucial that we hear the words of Jesus who said, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I wrote this short booklet to help you lay hold of this precious promise from Jesus so you can have the strength and the courage you need to be a light in the darkness. To order your free copy of Light in the Darkness, you can go to RenewalMinistries.net or call 1-800-282-4789. Hey, Billy, uh, it's really been great having you here today, and it's great to hear how your journey has unfolded and how you're living your life and reaching out to others in the Cultivate Coffee and Tap House. And uh, I'm just wondering if there's anything on your heart that you just like to share directly with, with folks today. Sure. Um, as we're recording this, we are just receiving into our uh, life in the Catholic Church uh, St. Mother Teresa. And I've been very inspired in my life, in my work. I think every day I think about Teresa and what she's taught me, which above all is this maxim, that there are no great things, only small things with great love. And it's something that I've tried to do every day with the customers that we have to treat each latte uh, as a demonstration of love, to treat each customer as somebody who is worthy of love. And sometimes it's harder to do than others. But as I ta try to tackle this big issue, hunger, and I look at the state of the world as we've talked about today, and we, we look at all the, the, the problems and the, the, the crises that are facing the church, that subtle reminder that Teresa gave that there are no great things that God calls us to. God is the great one. God is the one who will do the mighty works. We are called to be faithful in small things, whether it's the faithful changing of a child's diaper, the faithful uh, helping or assisting of someone who's in need, the service of a beverage, the cleaning of a bathroom. These are all sacred moments. These are all places where we actually know God's perfect will for our life, which is to be a servant, which is to be a person of love, which is to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ Amen. in the day to day, in the hour by hour. Uh, and I, I just want to encourage everyone to, to take time in those moments to recognize God is calling you to love. Amen. Good. Thanks so much, Billy. Really appreciate it. I really hope that to take advantage of the offer of the free booklet. I think it'll be really a help to you and a tool to reach out to others. Until next week, this is Ralph Martin, Billy Kangas, wishing you the very best, a life of love, a life of service, a life of getting up every day and saying, Lord, how can I do what I have to do today out of love for you and love for people?